To make white bread, we'll use the following items. A mixing bowl with a lid, spray oil, yeast, salt, bread flour, aluminum foil, cornmeal, room temperature water which has been sitting out for at least 12 hours, a teaspoon, a fork, and one cup. To make white bread, measure out two and a half teaspoons of yeast. Measure one teaspoon of salt. And then measure out one cup of bread flour. And then we'll stir this all together, mix up a little bit, and we'll add about a half cup of water. I'm not too worried about the exact measurements of the water. Uh, it's because I'm just getting the ingredients mixed together here. Uh, what really matters is having three cups of flour and then adding the right amount of water to that. So now I've got the bread dough is mixed up a little bit with the, the, uh, the flour and the yeast and the salt all combined. And I'm going to add two more cups of bread flour. So it's cup two, and this is cup three. So three cups of bread flour, and that's the end of the bread flour, so no more flour is added. Now I'm gonna, this is the room temperature water, I'm going to add another half cup. I'm going to stir that up. So it's not going to be enough water to actually have all the flour turn into dough. I don't want to add too much water, that's the point. I want to add just enough to get the dough to the right consistency. So it's not about the amount of water, it's the amount of uh, the consistency of the dough. I'm just adding water slowly, that's maybe another you know, fourth cup or less. I'm going to stir that dough get all the ingredients mixed. I'm scraping the sides with my fork to get the, the dry dough off the sides of the container. And I'm getting, so at the bottom there, there's some loose dough and the rest of the dough looks pretty evenly mixed, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. Just enough so that I can get some of that dough or the flour off of the, the bottom of the container. I'm going to be cleaning my fork off here periodically. The reason I let the water sit out overnight is because if there's any chlorine in the water that the purification system is added, then I want that chlorine to get out of my water before it interacts with the yeast, otherwise the yeast can get killed. So letting it sit out overnight allows the chlorine to evaporate from the water before I add it to the dough. So that'll be less harmful to my yeast. So I'm still getting pretty flaky, dry dough. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. And now I'm coming up towards what I, the consistency that I want, and I don't have much loose flour on the bottom of the container. So I'm being pretty cautious about the amount of water that I'm adding because I don't want to add too much water. If you add too much water, you don't want to add in more flour because you already set the amount of yeast and salt, so it's all about the ratio of balancing all those ingredients. I have a little bit of dry flour there on the bottom. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm pretty cautious at this point. I don't want a dry dough. I don't want a moist dough. I want the right consistency. We get a few more drops. And the mixing allows the dough to come to some 
equal amount of, uh, you don't want like a dry part of the dough and a moist part of the dough, you want it to be evenly mixed. So that's what the fork is allowing. So I'm still getting a little bit of flakiness in the dough and there's some dry parts at the bottom so you really want to turn it over and look at the dough. And like two drops, not very much. Alright, so the bottom, so right now I've got a little bit of moisture in the bottom of the pan and there's some dry parts of the dough. That's about the right place to stop adding water because once you turn this dough over, it'll soak up that moisture. So now I have a nice clean pan, there's nothing on the sides of the pan and the dough is sort of uh, pushing back against my fork. See how it bounces back there, that springiness is what I'm going for. And all the flour is all the loose flour is gone, but the dough isn't moist. So that's the the bread flour at work there. All right, so that's the consistency. I haven't kneaded it. I've just mixed the ingredients together. Now I'm going to cover it with a loose cover. We're not going to snap it on. We're just going to have a loose cover. I'm going to place this in the refrigerator. That'll sit in the fridge for about. 12 hours, maybe up to 24, and then we'll take it out of the fridge in 12 to 24 hours. The bread has now been in the refrigerator for about 12 hours. I'm going to take it out of the fridge. And if you have a clear container, you can see that there's little air gaps around the edges of the bread. That's where the yeast has been growing and creating out gas. So what I'm going to do is take it out of the container and put it on this tray. I'm going to put some aluminum foil on the tray and then we'll spray that with the pan, spray oil. And we'll pour a little bit of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal on the base and this will give the, the, the bottom of the crust a nice uh, texture. So we can just even this cornmeal out on the bottom. Now for the tricky part, getting the dough out of the container. What I'm going to do is wash my hands with a little bit of water so that the dough doesn't stick to, the, to my fingers. Then I'll just go around the inside and loosely, I don't, want to, I don't want to deform the dough too much, but I'm going to use my wet fingers and pull the dough away from the sides of the container. So you'll notice the center of the bread, I'm not mashing it down or anything. I don't want to collapse. I don't want to keep that structure that it has, but I'm just taking it away from the sides. And then we'll gently separate it from the bottom of the container. Using our wet fingers to get the dough off the, off the container. Now it's come off. It's separated. What I'm going to do is tuck it under. Tuck the edges under. And I'm not... I'm not manipulating the dough too much, I'm just giving it a nice rounded shape by tucking it under. So this is what the bottom looks like. So I'm going to take that dough, lay it on the tray, and then let it sit for about an hour and a half at room temperature, and let it rise and sort of like smooth out. Dry out, and you want to make sure your crust doesn't dry out at room temperature, you can use the same container and place it over the bread. But if it's moist out, you can just let it rise as is. So it depends on sort of the humidity level in the room, whether you want it covered or uncovered. Either way, once you've covered it, you want to watch so that the, when the dough expands, it doesn't fall into the sides of the container. So at some point it will expand outwards, and you'll have to remove the container so that it doesn't hit the container. The bread has risen for about an hour and a half on the pan. And the yeast is happy because it's a nice warm day out and I've got the doors open and the moisture is making the bread grow nice and high. So what we're going to do is we're going to preheat the oven. At this point I have a bowl of water that's oven safe. I've filled it with room temperature water before I turn the oven on. So I'm going to put this bowl in the oven. Now I'm going to preheat the stove. I'm going to put it on bake for 460. This is a gas uh, oven, but I've made it an electric oven it's the same way. So 460 degrees, 
and I start the preheat process. What that's going to do is going to, this water here is going to get warmed up by the oven preheat process and that will create a nice steam environment for the bread to be in. And the bread will go in once the preheat is finished and the oven is at 460 degrees. While we're waiting for the oven to preheat, I'm going to salt the bread. So this is Himalayan sea salt, it's very flavorful and strong. This is a, a salt crust, uh, makes the bread pretty tasty and yummy. We don't want to put it on too early because salt sort of inhibits the yeast growing process. So the next steps are the bread is going to go in the oven when it's nice and warm and preheated with a nice steam bath. Now the bread's risen, it's salt crust, uh, we've got the oven preheated, the water pan is sitting in the oven, so I'm going to put this bread in the oven. So the water there has created a steam bath at 460 degrees, and we're going to let the bread sit in that steam bath for 10 minutes. Take my hot pad, it's been 10 minutes that the water has been uh, steaming the bread crust, and then we're going to take the water out of the oven. The water is pretty hot, I'm going to be pretty careful with it. And just let it cool off in the sink. So the reason that we did that is because the steam is creating uh, an environment where the crust can grow without hardening. But we don't want to let the water in there for too long because then you'll have a soggy crust. So to get a crispy golden brown crust, you want to have 10 minutes of steam let the crust expand, and then after 10 minutes remove the water, the bread is still in the oven. So we'll let that finish up and come back later. One last time, it turns out to be golden brown in the oven. I'm going to take it out. It's still on its pan, but we're going to move it on to a cooling rack right away. The reason to do that is because we don't want the bottom of the bread to get moist. So we want to let it air out. So we'll let it cool there for about 5 to 10 minutes before cutting it. You don't want to cut it too hot. And there's your loaf of white bread.